Today I want to talk about um, the kickoffs, mainly defending the kickoffs. This will be mainly about uh, seven aside. Um, towards the end, I'll go into a little bit about eight aside um, and some um, Super League kind of variations. And then right at the very end, um, talk a little bit about the there's two main international rules that are, that are different that people might not be aware of. So just to begin with, seven aside, uh, mixed. Um, generally speaking, uh, you'll want to go three at the front um, and four at the back. So let's go like this. Um, one thing to consider is obviously the, the ability of the kicker themselves. If they've got an absolute cannon on them and they can get it to the to the try line, you might want to start like quite deep so that you can see where the ball's going and then you can can go to it. If it's one that's not that strong and a bit weaker, you can come come up a little bit higher. Um, so you'll know that after a couple of kicks, how proficient the, the kicker is uh, or the kickers on their team are. Uh, but generally speaking, you want to have sort of four at the back, three at the front, uh, kind of like this is fine. Um, you kind of usually want to go for your sort of taller, faster players who are kind of more comfortable with a rugby ball and also quite good at using their feet to stop a rugby ball um, because the, the kicks will be going along the ground and might be jumping all over the place. Uh, a, a really good way of stopping it is to use your foot um, just to control it before picking it up. Your front players, you kind of just want to be getting in the eye line a little bit. Um, something that I quite like getting people to do is this middle player to choose a side. Um, so let's say two chooses this side. It kind of makes it a, a less desirable kind of kick in this direction because you've got to get it either over or through two players here. Um, so maybe let's say you've got a really, really uh, strong player who's, who's really competent at sort of returning kicks, so collecting and attacking. Um, let's say it's this number five player who's like your sort of standout kind of player who can really return with with some interest. Uh, it might be a good idea just to have your middle player slightly over to the left because it will make this player, it might make them want to sort of choose to kick in this direction a little bit more. And then you get giving yourself a, a good chance to attack straight off the bat. Uh, some people just kick with their head down and aren't looking. They're just trying to hit it as hard as they can. Um, so yeah, maybe that, again, you'll kind of figure that out once you've seen them kick one or two times. The other thing for front players is that if they are absolutely cannoning these balls, it's not always a good idea to try and actually get a foot or a hand to it um, to sort of block it or th uh, slow it down. Um, if it comes at you directly and it's absolutely cannoned off you, the most likely thing to happen is that it's going to bounce off you. Um, either you'll give away a knock on or it'll come off you and then the kicking team can, can grab the ball straight away. Um, so if it's quite a hard kick, I just just let it go. Just let it go in behind, um, especially on grass pitches. The ball will probably start slowing down by the time it gets here, unless they've got an absolute cannon. For the back players, let's say this kick's come in this direction and it's kind of bobbling forward this way. I would say one of these two players has got to just be be sort of bold, put a call and say my ball, or whatever. Just you know, big call. Uh, as this, let's say it's this player, goes in to collect the ball like this. This player getting nice and sort of here as a support player. Um, so if anything happens, so if this person fumbles it and it kind of like continues to go back, you can just clear that up. Um, if you're kind of like back here, it's not all even back here. It's not very helpful. It's kind of, you know, um, if you're like nice and nice here, maybe a bounce off here. If it kind of scribbles over there, you can kind of you know, just help them out a little bit. Uh, it also means that if they catch it and they start attacking, you are either a passing option or if the tag is made, you immediately can be a, a dummy half and you can uh, still attack while these front players get back into position. Another tip is especially for the, uh, for the receiving the harder kicks, as that ball's coming in, if you try and stop it front on and you mess up, make a mistake, the likelihood is that you either knock it on or it'll come off you and go forward. And then it's a kind of 50-50 between these players to get this ball. And that's quite, partly it's quite dangerous because you're going to 
both be running at full pelt into this. Uh, but also it's kind of not securing the ball. Uh, so something from rugby union that um, players might be aware of is um, the idea of collecting a ball sideways. So if this ball is coming at you sideways, if, if you make a mistake or if it bounces off you or you drop it, the momentum of the ball is likely either going to make it, you know, it might go sideways here, but it's most likely just going to go backwards here, which is fine because you're still the closest person to it. Hopefully you've got a support player here who can like clear it up. If any mistakes happen, you can just kind of get it. And that's the same if you're catching it on the fall. So if it's up in the air and you want to catch it on the fall, um, if you are like that and you drop it, it's going to drop and go forward and it's a knock on. But if you catch it sideways, it's up in the air, you catch it and you drop it, it potentially will just go backwards and then you can just reclaim it. Front players, it's really important that you're um, quite uh, aware of the potential of a, of a short kick. Um, usually you'll have kind of your wing or link player giving them the eyes and sort of being getting ready. So if if this wide front player is kind of quite uh, tight and narrow in here, if they can get a kick into this corner, that's really, really difficult to defend because you're running that way while these two are running in that direction. So just be really careful about your positioning and what you can see these wide players doing are they kind of if they're right on the touchline hugging here and looking to kind of run in this direction uh, they might be looking for a short kick uh, same if you're too wide here they might put one in here and then it's kind of this is a sort of 50 50 because you've got these players coming in and you're kind of going in like that and again yeah you just don't really want that um, ideal situation is that you're here it goes here and you can just kind of use your body to to shepherd the ball um, and pick it up safely. And if you get tagged here, that's fine. So you can just reset. The other thing to think about is the sidelines, the touchlines. Um, if a kick is definitely going off the sides, there's potential that by trying to keep it in, you might knock it on um, and give the ball away. Um, so if you know that the ball is definitely going to go out on the side before someone can come and get it, um, and you're, you're not that confident about maybe getting it, just let it go out because you just start with a roll ball here. That's not that bad an outcome. Uh, you just start an attack from where it went out. Um, so, you know, it's it's the safer option. So for A to side and Super League, things are a little bit different, mainly because you've got the threat of a 50-10. So if this player kicks the ball and it goes out in between these two, Cones, they get a um, restart from here, and you're now defending uh, 10 meters from your line. So 50 tens are extremely, extremely good for the attacking team. So you want to absolutely stop those at all costs. Um, most most attacking teams, Super League, will go for one of these um, and try and ping it into these corners. Um, so what generally I would say is have um, your links. On, on the front cones. Um, so if it's coming in this direction, you need to be quite aggressive and you've got to attack it because if you let it come to you and it hits a divot or, you know, as it's rotating, it bounces over and goes through, you're going to be kind of screwed. So once it's rolling along the ground like this, it's come, come for you. You need to go for it, get a foot to it, get anything to stop it from going here. And then this player can come and sort of support. So just get a foot to it and stop it. So then Either you can catch it and attack or this player can kind of help you out. Even if you sort of like stop it kind of and it goes up in the air, this person might be able to be able to catch it. The other thing is it's eight aside. So with a kicker in the middle, you're going to have an uneven uh, spread. So here you've got the kicker in the middle. You've got three attackers on this side and four attackers on this side. So normally that would mean that the kicker, because it's hard to kick and then chase uh, from a kickoff, um, it means that the kicker is likely going to be kicking in this direction. So you kind of might want to make that a little bit more difficult, or you might want to have this player kind of be an extra support. So kind of free roaming to either, if this comes kind of here, you can kind of come in here. So you can have this middle player sort of have, make a read on where they think that that kick's gonna, gonna happen um, and kind of be an extra support player on this side. Now, for international rules, there's two things that makes kickoffs um, a little bit um, 
different to any other kind of level of tag. The first thing is that normally if a kick is kicked short and it for some reason doesn't make this 10, 10 meter line, uh, it will be then a restart um, for this green team um, on the halfway line and everyone else has to go back. So at every level uh, other than international, this kick always has to go beyond the 10 meter line. Otherwise it's a restart. For international level, if that kick looks like it's not going to make the 10, the receiving team can actually go and pick it up and just start attacking straight straight away. There's You don't have to wait for it to go dead and then go. The other rule in international tag rugby is something called a force field. What this means is you have a force field along the try line. And if the ball is kicked and goes over the try line at all, passes the ball just passes the the the, the try line it's dead it's out and so you then the, the receiving team takes a restart from the from the 10 meter line in all other levels um if it bounces before the try line and and goes over and you catch it behind the try line you're then free to continue play so that's pretty much it for um kickoffs um you could probably get into more advanced uh, things with the kickoffs in terms of thinking about the attacking side of it. Um, so the types of kicks you do, um, how you set up the ball on the floor, which part of the ball you're kicking. If you're going for short kicks, do you want to do sort of banana kind of stuff? Um, same with 50 tens, bananas or end over end, or do you want to get like a height on the ball? There's all sorts of different va variations of kicks from a kickoff. Um, that might be its own separate video um, when I can actually record someone doing and demonstrating those types of kicks. But for this video, just sort of thinking about your defensive priorities during a kickoff. So hopefully that was helpful.